Welcome to the Arkham Files, an actual play Call of Cthulhu RPG podcast. Featuring Seth Morrison as Tallahassee Turner. Say, hey, Billy, let's run out in the forest together. That worked out for me really well last time. Abel Morrison as Detective Billy McConnell. You've seen what we've seen. That dead light, the butthole monster. Donovan Bollard as Dr. Simeon Can't Stand Your Bits. What in the world? Where did you find that? Peter Morrison as Dominic Drunkard. We did establish there's no flamethrower, which is a crying shame. Sam Morrison as Major Frederick Aloysius Bakersfield. As soon as the going gets tough, the Tallahassee gets going. And I am your game master, the keeper of arcane lore, Alex Morrison. Now grab onto some dice and your sanity. Let's roll. Tallahassee, you are putting the final touches on your final contingency plan as you are obscuring your traps, uh, making the final preparations. As it's already been dark for a little while, the stars are up ahead. You hear a pop in the tree next to you as you turn and look up, and it appears that two squirrels in the tree above you have just exploded. What in the world? Is that... Were those squirrels? It's Tallahassee, you shake your head, maybe maybe thinking that uh, probably just another hallucination. I'm losing my mind. And knowing with, with all the events that have been happening and you're feeling the fractures in your mind widen more and more as these otherworldly experiences keep occurring, you can feel your mind slipping a little more and more. Knowing what's coming out on the horizon hearing the sounds of the town around you. You spread a little more foliage around on the booby trap that you have just set below you. Look up. Test the rigging that you have. Look around. Okay, feels dead. And get prepared to secure. face whatever might be coming. Try to steal yourself to do what... I'm ready. I know they're coming. Might whatever be called for you to do tonight. This is it. Don't get scared now. You're smelling the uh, smoke from the burning fires that are cropping up all over town. You see the flicker of flames lighting up crimson against the night sky and the clouds. And suddenly out on the edge of we- the western edge of town, you hear a different scream, different sounds. Ones that don't sound like they're coming from human throats. They're here. And you know that the creatures have arrived in New Jerusalem. So Tallahassee, you go back inside of Denny's. Uh, you see everybody in, everybody's in Denny's. Everybody looks very tense. Uh, they're checking their firearms. Everybody's checking their ammunition kind of over and over again, a little obsessively. Except for maybe Robert Morgan, who's just sitting at a table, still drinking. So one notable thing, or several not- notable things to you is that Ezra Denny and Billy McConnell have not yet returned. You thought they would have been back a while ago, but you haven't seen any sign of them since they left in the truck. Uh, Neither have you seen any sign of Major Bakersfield since he took off in Percival Warthrop's car heading north. The door is still unbarricaded. You've been leaving it open, waiting for the last few people to come in. So I guess the decision is left for you to make. Do you want to close and barricade the door? Or are you going to hold out a little bit longer to see if Billy and Ezra will make it back? Or maybe Major Bakersfield? Or any of the other townsfolk that might be wandering around? All right. So Tallahassee comes bursting in, slams the door. Gents, it's time. I heard them creatures scream. They're right at the edge of town. I know Bakersfield. He'll probably be another hour before he gets back. But where's Billy? Where's Billy? He's taking the women and children to safety. He should He should have been back. He was coming back, right? Yeah, he should like have he been Like he wasn't going to go he into the He should be back by now, but if those back. guys are coming, we got to barricade and he's... I don't think we should barricade the door. I think we should wait for Billy. I, I think everybody to. should get up to We're the gonna roof. We're going to wait. 
we're waiting for Billy. We got them booty traps out in the booby town. Traps. That's booby what I said. Traps. I said booby traps. We got them out in the town square, and I even got a couple more leading up to. They're all beefed, leading up to the tavern. I think what we should do is we should have everybody here get up on the roof. That way we have the high ground, and Anakin can't <laughs> come up on us. Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I I um, I ran all the the fuses into the shooty holes through the windows on the first floor. So I'm there with a lighter ready to go or matches ready to light those fuses. Okay. But I'm going to need somebody up top to caw when we got trap one. Who's got uh, good eyesight that could uh, see in the dark? And- let's get one of them, them uh, NPCs. <laughs> Make Percy go up there. Oh yeah, let's have Percy do sharpshooting and then Cobb for trap That's one a good and idea. Cobb for trap two. Percy, right? Percy you Percy, up for the job real quick. Hey Percy, want to make a buck? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a buck? Are you good at sharpshooting? I can do that. All right, make sure you caw. Wait, what? What? What do I do? Caw. Caw. That's pretty pretty standard. I, I, I caw. Why don't I just yell, set off the first booty trap? Booby trap. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess, all right, that would work. Okay, I, I will, uh, I will all call. Right. All right, but yes, I <laughs> I will climb up on the roof, and I will keep an eye out. Well, Percy, can we hear your call so we know exactly what it sounds like? <clears throat> so we're not mistaking it for another crow. crow. Call. Call. Oh. Call, that's I a, say. That's a good call. <laughs> Is that, how's that? As long as it's loud enough. I yeah, that was, right. that was a low register. We might not hear you. Can you give us a little bit of a higher register, please? All right, I'm going to give me another chance at this. Give me another take. <clears throat> All right, what's my motivation? Uh, you want to warn us of impending doom. Can I get a if little If you backst- don't warn us, if you can- don't warn us, you'll be yes. eaten by a smoothie. Okay. Can I get a little bit of backstory on the character? Yes. You're a... You're a scarecrow. You've been tied to a I'm post. I'm a scarecrow? In the middle Most of a field your entire scarecrows life. Scarecrows don't make any sound at all. They're, they're completely silent. They're just dummies. Uh, if you're scared. <laughs> <candles. laughs> all right. Okay. So to be clear, I'm going up on the roof. I will stand there motionless with my arms out. In hopes to frighten birds. <laughs> Now, that, what you're going to do is you're going to pretend there's birds on your arms, and you're going to be making the noises for those birds as the scarecrow. So let's hear what that sounds like. This is very abstract. <laughs> okay, I'm going to need some firearms. <laughs> All right, uh, Percy. Let's simplify here. <laughs> <laughs> You take a sniper rifle, go up on the roof. When they're by trap one, you yell, set off trap one. When they're by trap two, you say, set off trap two. All right, Ames, uh, give me that hunting rifle. He looks at him and he throws it over to him. He catches it. Um, uh, Percy takes the Tommy gun that he was holding. And uh, he uh, racks the uh, the bolt again and uh, sets it down on the table. He's like, I'll get this when I come back. Keep an eye on that for me. So he heads outside to go climb up on the roof. All right, I am waiting. I am waiting by the front door for Billy. I'm gonna. I'll, I will only barricade the door at the last possible moment if he doesn't make it back. I will wait also by the door and flamethrower anything that gets close. Okay. Uh, Tallahassee, you're standing over at the door, looking out, peering into the night, uh, hoping. Against hope to spot the headlights from the truck and maybe see uh, Billy McConnell uh, coming back towards you to hole up with you guys in Denny's. Dom Drunkard, you are positioned next to him with the flamethrower, kind of checking it, testing the weight of the tank on your shoulders, getting ready to, to live your dream of firing a flamethrower around at a horde of screaming shark man monsters. Yeah, how you doing over there? Maybe you should uh, take a little bit of this. You look a little nervous. Uh, Dom Drunkard, you turn around. You see uh, Robert Morgan standing behind you with a, a bottle of booze. Uh, yeah, man, after my own heart. Uh, he hands you a bottle of whiskey. Hey, I thought you looked looking a little nervous there, baby boy. 
<laughs> yeah, you ready for this? <laughs> Thank you. I take a little nip. This your uh, first, last stand against a horde of monsters? Get well, the chose. I mean, yeah, with it being a horde, I mean, I did face a multifaceted butthole monster in the past. Um, okay. Let's okay. just say, Dom Drum Card One, buttholes zero. But, you know, this is the first time against an actual, honest-to-goodness horde. Yeah, I remember my first horde. <laughs> Good times. Good times. How did you escape? I really ran. <laughs> how, that's how you always escape. You run. Are there any other options? I mean, are we pretty much dead if we don't run? Pretty much, baby boy. Pretty much. <laughs> but did you have a flamethrower? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't have a flamethrower. But, uh, but, so, you know, yeah, maybe you got a chance there, flamethrower, baby. But I feel bad for you, because you're just a baby boy. You're just kind of getting started. I'm old. You know, one horde's just kind of, kind of start bleeding into the next. One horde gets just like another. It's all right. Keep your chin up, baby boy. Chin's up. You little baby fat around your face. It'll <laughs> be all right. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Appreciate the encouragement. No problem, baby boy. Pats you on the back. I take one more little swig. Okay, okay, okay. Let's right. just don't get greedy here. Uh, and he grabs it, checks his, uh, his old single-action army that he's got. Um... And kind of peeks around you, looking out the door with you. All right, what are we looking for? What are, what are we doing? We're looking nobody, for. Nobody already told me where it's going. So any minute now, a bunch of shark-faced smoothies will come careening towards us, hoping to eat the flesh off our bones. All right, I've never seen a shark-faced smoothie before, so you just let me know. Just point it out to me when you when when it comes around. I don't want to miss it. If it doesn't have a head, and it has a giant shark mouth in its torso... Look, just point it out to shark. me, all right? You're just blah, 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 sharky, Dumb. sharky things. <laughs> Stop just making this complicated. Just point it at... Just point to Morgan. I'm a visual learner. Okay. Okay. So, when you see... <laughs> when you see me ignite the flamethrower, the thing that I am shooting the flames at will be the shark-faced smoothies. Yeah, I'll just shoot what you shoot. I will point with the flamethrower. Got it. Ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, since Dom has the front door covered, I'm actually going to go over to one of the, uh, to the window that I set up the fuses at and shoot through the shooty holes. Do that. Okay. Be ready with the be ready with those fuses for the first time that Percy calls. I'm also gonna go to one of the shooty holes and point my rifle out the shooty hole. Okay. All right. So everybody's kind of posting up after Tallahassee told them that that it's any minute now that the creatures should be making their way to this part of town. Uh, you see everybody tense up a bit. Uh, a lot of people are eyeballing the door very apprehensively. And uh, they're they're starting to get ready. They got their weapons. They're g gathering over by the windows, peeking through the cracks. Goodman Gray, again, still standing there with no weapons, kind of pulls his sl his sleeves up a little bit. It looks unusually calm. Uh, Zeke Dawkins is spinning the uh, cylinder in his revolver, kind of looking at Tallahassee, sizing him up a little bit. Gentlemen, there's something I gotta take care of. Jameson is up in his cabin by himself. I can't leave him there. I can't leave him to fight this thing's off alone. I've gotta go for him. I'll be back as soon as I can, but stick together, take care of each other, lean on each other. These past few months, since you uh, allowed me to come over and share a glass of some non-alcoholic water with you, I'm like, a really nice glass. Well, it's been a pleasure. 
Dominic. I'll never forget what you did for me. Pull me out of that butthole monster's mouth. And here, take this. I hand him old reliable. Major Bakersfield. You start running towards the front door of the cabin. Um, something that you notice is that it is alarmingly quiet around you. There doesn't appear to be any animal noises. Everything seems to have gone quiet in the woods around you. Until off in the distance, you start to hear something in the woods to the west. Maybe a branch snap. Something rustling. And then you start hearing some strange animal calls. Um, <clears throat> I've got my M1911 in the holster on my hip. I've got the shotgun in my hands and the rifle strapped in my back. And then I've got two sticks of dynamite um, in my jacket pocket. Okay. You see there's um there's one light that seems to be flickering in, in the window, maybe from a lantern inside. You rush up to the door, you're yelling Jameson's name. Uh you hit the front door, it's locked. Yeah, I'm yelling J Jameson! Jameson, we have to get out of here now! Uh, Major. Ma Major, is that you? Bakersfield. Open this door right now! Let me in. It's me, Bakersfield. You, yeah, you hear the voice of Grant Jameson from inside the cabin as he rushes over. You hear the door unlocking, and then it opens up. Uh, you see your friend and, and former military comrade standing there. He's also holding a rifle in his arms. He has a he also has an M1911 holstered at his hip. Opens the door. He looks around, like kind of glances out around you. He goes, come on, come on, come on, Bakersfield, get in here, get in here. Okay, I step inside and slam the door behind me and lock it. All right. Yeah, he locks it. The whole town is under attack. We've got to get back the there. The whole town? The whole town. There's over 40 of these things, and they're all staging an attack tonight. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. Slow down. You say 40 of these things? At least. Look, there's been... Uh, I, I've seen a couple of them. They've been, they've, been, they've been creeping around my cabin the last couple of nights. After you guys left. Then out in the woods, I've just seen kind of... Just hints of them around the trees, just figures. They're, they're, they're something. They're huge. Look, these things are seven to eight feet tall. They're huge. But look, they've been they've been coming back this way each night. They, they're getting closer. They're they're kind of like poking around. They look like maybe they're exploring, seeing what I'd do. But they're getting a little more brave each night. So we, what are we gonna what are we gonna do, Bakersfield? We have to kill every last one of these things. Everyone at. Uh, down in the in New Salem is holed up at Denny's. Uh, they're barricading the restaurant and preparing for the attack. All of the farms along the way from the sanatorium to New Salem have been hit. Everyone's dead. Everybody, you mean the farms? All the farms. What about the what about the Leightons? Did you did you see the Leightons on the way in here? I don't know. I, I don't know about them. I didn't have time to stop. Okay, you got a car. I've got a car, but ho oh, oh, ho oh, I've got something even better than a car. What's better than a car? <laughs> <laughs> a plane. All right, keep keep your wits about you, man. Tr do you trust me? Of course I trust you, Major. Well then, I need you to follow me into battle one more time. Okay, so um, I'm going to roll two d10 right now, Major Bakersfield. Um, and I should have done this as soon as you jumped out of the car and you blew your whistle. You rolled two ones. Okay. Hmm? You rolled two ones. Um, I did not. You also don't get to know what I rolled. But, actually, yeah, you can know. I rolled a seven. So, but anyway, but that's just for the record. For the record, I rolled a seven on the two d10s after you cast the spell. Heck yeah, baby. That's not bad. So you ran in, you're in here. Uh, looking around at the cabin, too, you see that uh, there's Jameson has also been fortifying in here um, due to the incursions from the creatures from the last couple nights. He's got he's been boarding up the windows. He's been pushing his furniture around closer to the windows and near the door also. 
Um, and Bakersfield, I'm going to want you to roll a listen check. All right. My listen sucks. 77 out of 20. <laughs> okay. All right. You want to push the roll? Oh, Bakersfield. Uh, so, so what are we going to do? We've got to make our way back to New Jerusalem. we got to help everyone out. All right, so are, are we going? We are we going to go right now? We're going. We'll grab all the equipment you need. Grab whatever guns you want, you need. And let's get out of here. I, I got what I can carry right now. So all right. I, if we're if we're wearing if we've got to move quick, then I, I don't want to take much more. I don't want to take any more than this. He's just got his rifle and his, his 1911. All right, I look out the window to see if Slotty Botfost has arrived yet. Uh, roll spot hidden. Four. Nice. Out of 44. Ooh. Nice. Um, Extreme. Uh, looking out. So you look out through the uh, through the uh, cracks in the planks that he's hammered up. It's not. They're not completely covered over. He's just thrown up as many planks of wood as he could over each of the windows. Though it doesn't look like he had a ton of supplies. So you're peeking out, looking through the dirty glass, uh, looking at the sky. You do not see any signs of Slotty Botfost uh, yet in the sky, which is, for those listening, is the name that Sam gave the creature that he summoned. But while looking around, you don't see anything in the sky. You do catch a hint of movement in the trees as something uh, flickers quickly from one trunk to another. Just a few yards outside the perimeter of the cabin. You have a little bit of a clear area around the cabin before the foliage starts up thick again with the trees. We may not be able to get out of here uh, without a fight. So be ready. No, I'm I'm, I'm ready. What about your car? Uh, Well, I left it running. Um, shoot, I don't know. Should I? I already summoned Slotty Botfoss. I thought you. I thought your plan was that you were going to send him back in the car, and you were you were going to ride Falcor back. No to way, town. we were going to spoon on fly back together. So, so what do we do? Do we make a break for it? Do you see anything out there? Yeah, I can see movement in the trees. These things are huge. They're fast. They're great climbers. I didn't. I didn't hear. I didn't hear. I, I didn't hear anything. Have you, can you hear anything? It's quiet. It's too quiet outside. I don't hear anything, but I, c- I can see him. So yeah, you're 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 talking to him, and you're looking out the window, Major Bakersfield. The little flicker of movement that you saw. You're glancing back and forth, um, and you're you're looking at this spot between the trees. You're looking at a, one of the tree trunks, um, and it takes you a second until you realize that what you're looking at isn't actually one of the tree trunks. You catch a glint of light off of one black eye as it's halfway poked out from around the edge of one of the tree trunks and it's looking right towards you. Alright, I'm gonna uh, unstrap my rifle. And this is not this is not one of the small infant creatures that you found in the basement of the Russell farm. It's, it's tall and lanky. This must be one of the adolescents. At least, maybe. You're hoping that this is one of the adults because it's about seven and a half feet tall. Oh, it's tall and lanky. It's standing stock still, just staring at you. Is that the only one I see? Yes. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna... Smash a hole in the window uh, through the planks. Okay. I'm gonna stick my rifle out and I'm I'm gonna shoot it. Major, what are you doing? What do you what do you, you see something? Why are you breaking my window? Yeah, there's one of them up in the trees right there. We might have to fight our way out of this. I'm gonna shoot it. So yeah, I smack. I point my gun out the window and I freaking shoot this mother. Okay, so in the, uh, in the weak spot. You got your uh, Lee Enfield. Yeah. Okay. All right, so 
So you line it up, you start sliding it up, up against the uh, plank of wood, trying to line up your sights on the creature. So, all right, I want you to use your firearms rifle. Roll it for me. All right. Freaking 92 out of 75. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna... Um, I'm gonna spend 17 luck to get a success. You're gonna spend 17 luck? I've got 77. This is gonna be a crazy night. I don't know. I don't want to miss, because then it's... You can't, you, you can't push the roll, can he? No, not in combat. You can't. You can't push it. Um, Rick, I've got a lot of luck, and we're going to need it tonight. I feel like if I if I don't hit this thing, then I'm kind of hosed. They're like, they're going to they're gonna attack. I'm doing it. 17 luck. Dro- I'm dropping down to 60 luck. All right. That's a... Uh... It's a hefty toll. That's a, those are some bold moves. Um, okay, uh, Major Bakersfield. So you're aiming at the creature. Uh, you feel the nerves starting to kind of take over. You're shaking a little bit as you are trying to line up the sights right over the eye of this creature that seems to be just standing there so still looking at you shake for a second, but you steal yourself, draw on some sort of hidden reserve of will before you squeeze the trigger carefully, and suddenly there's a bright flash and an explosion in the night in this cabin. And that's a hit, Major Bakersfield, so roll your damage. Three. Two. Oh my gosh. Plus four. Um, so nine. Nine? Yeah. Okay. That's not bad, though. Nine's pretty good. Yeah, but we... Well, at least I imagine these things are freaking tough. Yeah, but from that far away, nine isn't bad. That's true. So there's the bright flash, um, the explosion of the gun going off, and then you hear a roar, and a, a roaring scream from the creature as it disappears behind the tree. You, you're positive that you made contact with it hoping that you hit it somewhere vital as it disappears back behind the tree taking cover again Jameson let's go we're making a break for the car we gotta go now alright yeah you hit it alright okay, let's go let's go so I stick my rifle back on my uh, on the strap on my back um, mm-hmm. and whip out my shotgun again I fling the door open we okay. make a break for the car all right, you guys rush towards the front door of the cabin. You fling the door open, and as you do, illuminated in the headlights, standing between you and the car are two more seven to eight foot tall creatures standing just a few feet outside the door. Get back in, slam the door. Jameson stops, skids to a halt, looks up, and goes, Clever smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> We should have looked out the dynamite. Um, As you open the door and you make eye contact with these things as they're hunched over, glistening in the moonlight in their pale, smooth skin, Uh, they both let out a roar and they start sprinting towards you. Long arms almost dragging along the ground as they start flying towards you and Jameson in the door of the cabin. So what are you doing, Bakersfield? Okay, I, I, yeah, we're back inside, but I, uh, I pull out the the dynamite, uh, snap the fuse, I light it, and then I like underhand toss it in their direction. I don't do like a full blown throw. I just kind of chuck it. Bakersfield, get in here! Get in here! What are those? They're smoothies. <laughs> Um, uh, okay, so the uses per round on dynamite is one half, so it takes one basically turn to pull it out and light it, and then on your next turn you can throw it. Oh, man. Um, alright, since I didn't know the dynamite maneuver, uh, it turns, I guess I'll forego the dynamite chucking for now, 
and we'll we'll just uh, get back in, slam the door, and push whatever he had back up against the door. Okay. So yeah, the the creatures are probably 15 feet outside the door, away from you. As you uh, you push Jameson back behind you, as you fall back inside, slamming the door, and um, as you yell to Jameson, uh, Jameson, barricade the door now! All right, uh, you guys both, you you run over to the end of the couch, you're, you're shoving it, you tip the the uh, shelf over in front of the door. Uh, you slam the couch just as there is a a loud impact on the other side of the door. As the creatures smash into the door from the other side, it holds. It hasn't broken, but you don't know how many more of those shots that this door can take. With the impact of the two massive creatures on the other side, you hear roars and scratches in the wood from outside as the door is shaking from continued impacts from blows from the creatures from outside. Oh, Bakersfield, what are we going to do, man? What are we going to do? Oh, those things are huge. Those, those are the same ones. I've seen these. It's the same three. Same three have been poking around here. Just stay calm, man. We can take, we can handle these three. I've got help on the way. We just got to hold out till it gets here. Oh, what, are we, what are we doing here? Are there any windows by the door that I could maybe shoot out of? Uh, not by the door. There's some on the on the sides. It's it's not right by the door. It's a few. Uh, it's kind of closer over to the. Uh, uh, it's not right next to the door, but it's a it's a good five or six feet down the wall. Um, trying to decide if I should shoot at the door. Maybe at least frighten them off. I'm, I mean, I'm worried about weakening the door, but I don't know if it's really going to hold up for very long anyway. Um, so I might just shotgun blast it, and if I blast a hole through it, that'll give me enough to, like, chuck dynamite out of. Uh, Jameson's kind of looking at you, he's, he's backing away from the door, uh, he's checking his rifle, uh, making sure it's loaded again, he, he's looking nervous, he's, he's just kind of glancing around. Jameson, first things first, star formation, flying V. <laughs> uh, you can see he's looking, he's looking pretty panicked, the, f- the first full, uh, full view of one of these creatures uh, looks like it's shaking him quite a bit he's like where do these things come from man those aren't natural hey look look at me man look at me look at my eyes Bakersfield man major major woo how many tight situations have the two of us been in and how many have we gotten out of the two of us are still here we can do it again alright listen to me those are normal do everything I say and we can get out of this these are just animals. They're no, nothing more. I've seen, I seen animals. They, th- those ain't animals, Major. Yeah, well, they're smoothies. <laughs> if I can take down a squad of Germans with nothing but a net, then I can handle three smoothies. And so can you. We just got to keep our heads about us. Now watch me make this shot. I want you to roll a... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want you to roll a... Uh... I want you to roll a persuade check. See if you can persuade him to calm down a little bit. It's a ten. <laughs> All right, man. I get bonus die because I'm your major. Oh, ninety-six. <laughs> 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 That's, a nice That's a fumble. Uh, we're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Every man for himself. I fling the door open and chuck him out. <laughs> you gotta change those dice, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm switching 92, 96. Fire. So he, he looks at you. He hears what you're saying. He's just shaking his head. He's like, Major, no, it's not. It's, it's, something's happening. I think we we died, Major. We died somewhere back there in the trenches. and We're in heck now, man. This heck. is heck. Well, it's not that bad then. I imagine we'd be getting grondled by centaurs if we were really in heck. And we're not getting grondled, and these aren't centaurs. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. Grondled. Grondled? <laughs> centaurs. There's another slam up against the door. He, he backs up away. He, he just starts backpedaling. Um, getting away from the door. He slams up against the wall. Uh... Uh, on the side of the cabin, near the window. Focus on that window. You take that thing out. I'll handle the ones at the door. Next to the window, suddenly there's an impact 
uh, against the window itself as the window shatters. And an arm smashes through the panes of glass, the fingers, a hand manages to, sque to squeeze right between the cracks and two of the barricaded planks of wood as they reach around, reaching for uh, Grant Jameson as he's got his back up against the wall, uh, trying to take a swipe at him. Jameson, get down! Duck! Now! All right, he, uh, you warn him, he looks to the side, he sees it, you see his eyes go wide just as the, uh, the arm, the forearm and, and claws, these hands are huge. Everything on this, on this, these creatures just seems to be exaggerated. Anything on their bodies that can do damage seems to be too long and too, too sharp, too strong as these fingers and, arm and hand reach out towards him trying to claw at his face. Okay, if I, I swing my shotgun up at him and I yell duck. Okay, so uh, you warn him and he's and in enough time for him to look over and see this hand clawing towards him. Let's see. So, the first swipe of the monster towards uh, Jameson's face. Okay, uh, Jameson is going to attempt to fight back as it comes at him. So the hand swings in around and uh, Bakersfield, you warn Jameson just in time as he brings up his rifle and is able to deflect the hand uh, swiping towards his face and he swats it away, backs off as it sparks down the edge of his rifle and drags back outside the window with a roar. And you hear a scream from the outside, more impacts on the window barricade. What do you do? Uh, I run over and I point my gun through the slats of the window directly at the monster and pull the trigger on my shotgun. Okay, yeah, normally I would give you a penalty die, but since it's kind of reaching in, trying to claw at it, trying to claw at the window, and you are so close, I will negate the penalty die as you're kind of blind firing, Ooh, though, nah. since it's close. So just roll a straight uh, rifle shotgun. Ooh, 11 out of 75. Oof. Oh, if you had a butt, I'd shove this gun in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's an extreme success. Um, so that would be an impale. Okay, so for on an impale, you don't have an impaling weapon, I believe. A shotgun is not an impaling weapon. I thought I thought a gun was an impaling weapon. Um, guns, other guns are, but. Uh, shotguns are not because they, they they do a spread they don't penetrate but even on a normal extreme success if it's not an impaling weapon you just do max damage on an impaling weapon basically you do double damage shotguns like 3d6 right so uh that's a that's 4d6 oh god 24 damage jeez Okay, so Major Bakersfield, uh, you see, you see this hand swing in as you scream at uh, at Jameson to get down. He manages to barely deflect it out of the way as he dodges aside, shoving the arm back from him with his rifle. As you sprint towards him, uh, towards the window, uh, and you bring the shotgun up, jamming it between the cracks in the barricades, uh, trying to lodge it right right in the direction that the arm is coming through and as you push it through you feel it hit contact or make contact uh, once you feel that contact your eyes widen a little bit and you pull the trigger the shotgun explodes with fire and noise and smoke as you see a flash out the window that illuminates the creature standing there for just a moment until it is blown backwards several feet and lands on its back it looks since it's it is a it's a very tall creature. They're about seven and a half feet tall, but they're not very thick. From getting a better look at it, you think that this 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 is most likely probably one of the adolescents. It has a gangly look of like a teenager that seems that hasn't quite grown into its limbs and body yet. 
so it's thin around the middle, and your shotgun blast looks to have nearly torn it in half as it lies motionless on the ground, bleeding out. Remember, Jameson, when you're backed into a corner, there's only one thing you can do, and that's turn around and fight. Now come on, man. Okay, oh yeah, right. Yeah. Bakersfield, you, you, you killed it. You killed it. And he looks out the window and goes, Screw! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> um, after your ears stop ringing uh, from the shotgun blast, you notice you're, you're not hearing the impact noises from the front of the cabin anymore. Uh, does it look intact? It's still holding. There's some cracks in the wood in the door frame around it. Jameson, grab the table. Help me flip it up against this window. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's do it. All right, we grab this table and we tip it over and push it up against that window. You pick it up, you start dragging it across the floor, lifting it up, uh, placing it over the window. As, as you're doing that, um, glancing between the slats, you, you see the other two creatures as they come around the edge and they're looking down at the remains of the creature that you just killed, the smoothie that you just blew in half. They, they look down at it, they look up, at, up in the window, and they, they start dragging it off into the woods. And as they're doing it, though, you see them, they start pulling chunks of meat out of it with their long, clawed fingers and shoving it into their mouths as they're dragging it back into the woods. You see them move just as you slam the, uh, the table up against the window. You look over the door, barricaded and uh, slightly broken, though not broken in. And you make eye contact with your your longtime friend, Grant Jameson. He says, Okay, so what now? Hey, fellas. Uh, I've been feeling like I, I gotta get the truck and I gotta go gather up the townsfolk, women and children try and get them to the tomb. Uh, you know, I just, I gotta do it. I gotta help out. I know there's a lot of work here to do, but I'm gonna head out and go try and do that. So, Tallahassee, you know, it's been awesome. Uh, I really hope I can come back. But if I don't, you know, I love you guys. Cindy, you've really been a help to me. Bakersfield, you're strong. You've been a, a strength to me. Dom, you've been a real friend, and I hope I can come back because I really want to help you find your wife and kid. But I got to do this. I got to go get those people up to the tomb, try and help them escape, get them safe, and uh, I'll be back as quick as I can. But you know, if I can't get back, then uh, take out the smoothies for me. All right, Billy McConnell, you and Ezra Denny are pressed up against the side of your truck as you're looking towards the run-down shack that, from what you hear, is the residence of one Ike Watson. You still hear yells and shouts in the distance, though you're a little ways outside of the center of town now. You're closer over to Mordecai's shack that's up the road and around the corner and down that long, lonely trail. It's a little more wooded over here. All the other shacks and houses around are also dark. And looking at Ike's, at Ike's house, it looks dark through most of it, but you do catch the uh, flicker of maybe some candlelight from inside through one of the windows. How big is the house? Is it, a, is it like Mordecai Shep's shack? Like just tiny? Yeah, it's 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 kind of like Mordecai Shep's. It, it's it's bigger than Mordecai Shep's. Um, his was just one big room. Uh, this looks like it has maybe one bedroom off the back or like one room off of the, uh, the main area. So just a little bit bigger. Is that where I see the candle or? Yeah, it looks like it's coming from the back of the house but also very dilapidated, run down. There are uh, spaces between some of the slats of wood. 
you know, shingles missing off the roof. The windows are dirty. It's hard to see anything inside in the dim light and the dirty windows. Okay. Uh, I really quickly run around to the back of the truck and grab a, a small length of rope um, out of our supplies. Okay. Uh, as quick as I can, and then heading towards the back, back towards the front of the house. Uh, Ezra, we're gonna go in fast, and yeah, just give me one second as soon as we get in uh, in view of Ike uh, before we we decide to start firing. All right, it's not shoot on sight. Just give him one second. Unless he points his gun at us, you just just hold your fire. Okay. Okay, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to hit, uh, I don't want to hit Delilah or Zachary. You know, they got to be in there, so we, we, we need to be careful. Yeah, we need to be careful. All right, so we'll go in fast, we'll clear the first room. Uh, looks like there's another room around in the back, so we'll clear the first room, and then we'll move to the, the door, and we'll go through that quick, and uh, clear the second room. And I, I'm, they're probably in there, so... Uh, we gotta get get the the uh, firing lines. If we need to shoot, we make sure we don't hit the kid or Delilah. Yeah. Um. Right. So yeah. Don't 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 shoot unless we got a clear shot. All right. You ready? Okay. Uh. Yeah. I think so. It's uh. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, let's uh, I'm do ready. This. I'm ready. You ready? I give the handle a jiggle. Is it unlocked? Yeah, it's unlocked. Uh, are you going to stealth up, or are you just moving up? Uh, stealth up to the front of the house? Yeah, are you going to try and sneak up on the house, or are you just going in? Might as well. I mean, uh, you know, if I get it, I get to check okay. off another thing, so... Stealth's 24. 65. Okay, yeah, so that's a failure on your stealth. Uh, you come moving up, you're... You're attempting to be uh, as quiet as you can be, but uh, with your nerves and uh, with also trying to move at speed, you're not really succeeding in being that quiet. As uh, Ezra's moving up behind you, and he's he's not exactly uh, a ninja himself. So you guys get up against the door, or you get up to the door, you check it, it is not locked. What do you do? Okay, I uh, hold up three fingers, and I count down to one. And then I go in fast. Oh, before I go in, I say, you take the left, I'll take the right. In both rooms. Yeah. Okay, yeah, got it. Okay, three, two, one, go. All right, you burst through the door, you throw it open, and move in as quickly as you can. Uh, first thing that you see as you come in and you and the door swings open, uh, it is dimly lit. It is... A mess inside. There's one room that is a living area with an attached kitchen. Um, and the first thing you that you notice when you come in in the dim light is there seems to be blood all over the place. And there are strange things on the walls, symbols, it appears. <laughs> Glancing around, uh, you see the light flickering from the room in the back. You hear some voices from the back room though you can't make out what they're saying quite yet uh, when you slam it open they only speak for another second you hear a scream of a woman from the back room uh, looking around you don't see anybody in this main room as you come as you you and Ezra come pushing into the room moving quickly okay we come in quick we notice all that stuff you just said yeah, I hear the little scream and uh, just I just say, go, go, go. And we go straight towards that room and do the same thing, going quick. I go to the right, he goes to the left. You're pushing, you're moving back, you look, you see, a, you know, there's a wood-burning stove in here. There's a table with a couple of chairs, wooden chairs. They're tipped over. There's some plates. Uh, there's blood, and you don't know why there's so much blood everywhere. You push back, you move into the room. Uh, as you enter this room, it is not a large room. It's a... It's a small bedroom that's off here. Uh, you see what looks like maybe there's a, uh, a small closet to your left just as you come in. 
Uh, but what dominates, uh, what catches your attention most in the room is the figure of Ike Watson on the other side of the room. There are several candles lit um, and there are symbols drawn all over. There is, you see the form of Delilah Bevins. She's on the floor. She's, uh, her wrists are bound together and she's cowering. It looks like there's some blood on her head leaking down her face. You see the boy, Zachary, and he's, he's curled up next to her. He also has his wrists bound together. Uh, he's whimpering softly. Delilah is, just has this look of terror on her face as she's looking up at Ike standing over her. He's holding a knife in his hand. And he's turned towards you as you come in. Um, and over on the floor to your right, uh, you see that his bed is pushed up against the wall to make more room. Uh, there's things drawn on the floor. Uh, on the floor also is a body um, over on the right side of the room near the bed that's been cut open. Uh, there's blood everywhere. And Ike looks up at you. Uh, you guys make eye contact as you come in the room. Eye contact? And he, uh... Yeah. Command of the Make wizard. Music. Uh-huh. And I, I cast it. Like, as soon as he looks in my eyes, it's cast. I'm like, boom. Drop it. Okay. All right. Command of the wizard. Okay. Let's, um... Battle of wills. All right. That's... Okay. That's going to be one magic point and one sanity okay. point. Um, and actually, though, one thing, one of the things that stands out the most as you're looking at Ike Watson, he's wearing pants. He's not wearing a shirt. He seems to have some like it's like a cloak or, you know, what he probably would like to think is a cloak, but just looks like it's a ratty old blanket or something of just a, a dirty yellow color that he has draped over his shoulders and he's, that he, ha- he has his arms out to the side. This dirty, ratty, yellow cloak that he seems to be wearing, and painted on his chest, he has a symbol uh, that looks like this. That's painted on his chest or carved? It's painted on his chest. It's got three spots for you to put three holes in his chest right there. Does that does that look anything like uh, the symbol that Dom described when he was uh, when he found that his wife and kid were gone? Uh, no, it okay. does not. No, this is different. You've never seen this before. And actually, when you see it, looking at it, it almost looks like the top part almost looks like a question mark coming down. There's a point in the middle, and then there's another. Uh, swirling flourish coming off the bottom right that curves around back towards the center circle and then almost like a bent leg coming off the bottom left it's all he has it also painted in yellow on his chest and looking at it 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 it, it messes with your mind for a second just looking at it and seeing this symbol and it it seems to trigger something primal uh, inside of you. There's just this jolt of fear and confusion a little bit when you look on it. And uh, uh, Billy McConnell, I need you to make a sanity check. Sanity. Uh, Okay, so that was before I lost that one point of sanity though, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, this happens before you cast the... uh, the spell because this happens just from looking at this thing uh i rolled a 40 a 40 sanity 61 yeah the success okay success all right uh okay you lose no sanity points no sanity okay cool which is good because that could have been setting yourself up for something poor (sighs) okay so you look at it it messes with your mind for just a second but you manage to shake it off and then, yes, you look up and you make eye contact with Ike Watson. And he's opening his mouth to say something. But before he can, um, you shove your will out from you. 
uh, empowering it in the way that you you've learned from studying studying those mythos tomes that you have. Uh, you send it out as it makes contact and it makes and it hits resistance with Ike Watson's will for a moment. And now I need you to make oh, a pal come check. on, pal. My pal's 80, so let's go. Holy I'm cow. Ho hoping to... You can spare some luck on this one. Jeez. <laughs> Billy McConnell's oh, a 78. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Regular success. Come okay. on. Come right, on, Ike. Go. You ain't nothing. Roll high. As your guys' eye lasers meet in the middle to see whose Schwartz is bigger. Ooh. Ike Watson old, rolled an 07. Oh, dang. Come on. My whole plan. I told you just shoot him Shut in the face. Shut your fat face. <laughs> Please put your fat finger down. So he... So what do you say, McConnell? What are you trying to command him? I command I say... Uh, as our eyes meet, I say, freeze! So he looks at you, and when you say that, he feels the contact of your minds as he as he shrugs off your attempt to dominate him, and he just smiles. <sighs> he says, uh, he says, no, it's not time to freeze out of town. Now's the time to act. Can't you hear it? I know you've been hearing it. Everybody can hear it. He's calling. He's calling to us. You can hear the whispers. I've been hearing it. I've been hearing it for a long time. He wants this. He wants all of this to happen. Uh, he starts kind of brandishing his knife. It's like he wants it. He wants the chaos. Can't you hear it? Tell me. The only thing I hear you hear it? is you die. Bang. <laughs> so you hear him saying that and he, he's not making any movements towards you but yeah he's just saying can you hear it do you know where it's calling it's calling us Carcosa uh, Carcosa as he says that from the closet to the side of you comes out rushing Levi brandishing a knife as he rushes towards you and attempts to gut you with it. Okay, I'm gonna fight back. Okay. Uh, I rolled a 54, which is a success, a regular success for my fighting brawl of 64. Uh, 54, okay. All right, so Levi comes rushing at you from the side. Okay, what did you roll, a 54? 54. Okay, well, Levi rolled a 91. Oh, yeah. There we go. So, as he comes... <laughs> uh, Alright, so I want you to roll your damage. Uh, what is it, unarmed or... My... Uh, yeah, it would just be your unarmed. Basically, you're kind of... You're trying to dodge aside and you're just... You're either going to pistol whip him or... Elbow him or yeah. hit him with my pistol. Yeah, why don't you describe what you do as he comes rushing up... And he tries to stab. He's bringing up the light, the knife low, trying to bring it up into your gut. Yeah, with my uh, little, not my extensive training, but I do have some training in hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. So I take his hand as he's thrusting up, and I, I push it to the side and let it just keep going up by me, without hitting me. And I let, I follow his hand up, and I throw an elbow to his face. Okay. Yeah. So roll your damage. Yeah, it, it's a D three. Plus my damage bonus, so I got a one plus four, so five. Five, okay. All right, he comes rushing in towards you. Uh, knife is, is glinting in the in the candlelight as he brings it up. You deflect it aside and bring your elbow up into his face, giving him a staggering blow as it knocks him a bit to the side. And Ezra steps up, uh, pointing his gun at uh, Ike Watson. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it, I'm taking a shot. Because he pulls up his 38. All right, he rolls a 41. He got a success. That a boy, Denny. All right, he gets four damage on a on Ike, which is apparently even less than your 
<laughs> my elbow. Elbow. Yeah. Caught him with a good elbow. There's a flash from Ezra Dandy's 38 revolver as it goes off, and you see blood explode out of the arm oh. of Ike Watson across the room, and he staggers back a little bit. Blood hits the wall behind him. He yells, looking back towards you, and uh, looking down at Delilah on the ground. Seems to be kind of weighing his options back and forth as he looks at the knife in his hands. All right, uh, Billy, what do you do? Oh, it's following back to me. He's looking down. Yeah. Uh, I do the same thing. I cast Command of the Wizard, and I say, freeze! Okay. All right, make another power roll. Okay. Uh, yeah, Ike, basically, he kind of just stood there on his last turn, and that's when he Did was all talking, he's talking. You, distracting you, I guess, from the, uh, yeah. Come on, Billy. You know you want this. Come on. Yes! 16. 16? 16, baby. That's a, that's extreme. It's right on the extreme. Yeah! Okay. All right. <laughs> I rolled a 70. Yes. Oh, suck it, Ike. So this time, when you say that, Ike's body just goes rigid, unnaturally so. As you say that, he does, in fact, completely freeze. His body freezes like he's gone into some sort of a seizure. He doesn't move at all. He even kind of topples a little bit, uh, hitting into the wall, though he doesn't fall over completely. Uh, Levi, on the other hand, uh, he sees that happen, and he looks at you, and he uh, he shrugs off your head, and he comes after you again with the knife. Okay. Same thing. As he, uh, yeah, just screaming. Ah! Uh, 63. It's a regular success by one. Okay, well, you beat Levi again. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Self-defense coming in handy. All right, roll your damage, Billy. Oh yeah, damage. Oh, uh, two, so six. Jeez. Well, my damage bonus is plus four, and it says I get unarmed attack plus damage bonus. Isn't your damage bonus a D4? So oh, you need to shoot. roll the yeah, D4? Yeah, you're right, it is a D4. Dang it. <sighs> You cheating varmint. Let's back up. Oh, so do you need a do, <laughs> you, do you need to re-roll your uh, damage? Yeah. So uh, let's go back to the first the first hit. My elbow that was amazing. Okay. Yeah, All right, so it's so only a two. Okay, so um and then the second hit. Alright, add two hit points back onto yeah. him. Uh okay, so that second hit was it's gonna be four total. Okay, so, so yeah, he comes in again. He, he attempts to stab you again, though off balance. You again just swat it aside, and you pistol whip him in the side of the face. <laughs> it knocks him aside. Ezra looks at looks at uh, he looks at Ike across the room and looks down, like kind of looks back and forth between him and Levi for a second. Shoot Levi! And then he uh, looks down at Levi and and he uh, yeah he points it at Levi and he takes a shot at Levi. Oof, okay, yeah. Dang. Nice work, Ezra. So he comes in trying to stab you again. You knock it aside, you pistol whip him, and as his head goes down, uh, Ezra steps right up and puts his gun right down to it and shoots him right in the head. Oh my god. And drops Gosh. Levi into the ground. Talk about a grand slam. <laughs> <laughs> You're too far from your mic, dude. I can't say it. I'm not trying Dang. to talk All for right. him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what I call a grand slam. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, it's so sadistic. Billy's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Served all day. Dang, Ezra, you are hard. You hard, man. So after he does that, uh, back to me? Yeah, what do you do? I, I go, I rush over to Ike, I cuff him, pull out my cuffs, I cuff him behind the, cuff his hands behind the back, and I get the rope that I brought, and I basically hog tie him. Okay. And I wrap whatever I can around his head, because I don't want him, I don't want him seeing or looking at anybody to, you know, just kind of gag him, but 
his whole face. Yeah. So uh, after I get him all hogtied, we got I I turn to De- uh, Ezra. Ezra, we got to get the we got to get Delilah. Delilah, we got to get out of here. The monsters are coming. Uh, let's get him in the back of the truck. We're taking him with us. We're get, he's going to be useful. Okay, yeah. Uh, Delilah's whimpering, and so is Zachary. She goes, thank you. Thank you. Help help us. Yeah, we, we, we got to get out of here. He's crazy. He's so crazy. And Ezra's like, hey, it's, all, it's okay. It's all right. We, we got you. Let's, let's get out of here. So... He helps them up, and between the two of you, you guys are both able to drag Ike Watson out of the house and throw him in the back of the truck. Throw him in the truck, get uh, Delilah, get it. We all pile in as quick as possible after we get him in the back. Uh, I asked Denny if he won't mind hanging out back there and holding him down as best he can, and I lay on the gas and get out of there, heading back towards Denny's. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to this episode of The Arkham Files. This is Peter. You might know me better as Dominic Druncard, or as the voice of reason on the greatest actual play podcast on the airwaves. If you like the show as much as we like making it, please leave us a five-star review and tell your friends about us. Check us out at patreon.com forward slash the Arkham Files. We have a lot of cool bonuses over there for our subscribers. Thanks again for being an Arkham Files listener.